Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, we are going to talk today about equivalent fractions and common denominators. I am going to do three examples. Then you are going to have to do some on your own, and then we'll check it and see how well you understand. We have to know how to do this before we can add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. So we have to know how to do this first. Otherwise, adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators is going to be difficult for us. So the title of our lesson, title of our video, equivalent fractions and common denominators. Equivalent fractions and common denominators. If you're watching this at home, please take these notes. <coughs> If you're watching at home, please take these notes. First off, we're going to take two fractions. We're going to take the fraction one tenth and one fifth. Joshua, if I were to ask you to add these two fractions, could you do that the way they're currently written? No. No. Why not, Joshua? Because they don't have a common denominator. Because they do not have a common denominator. Very good, Joshua. Very good. So, who remembers how we find common denominators? Sanaya? Good. We find our least common multiple. So yes, we are going to multiply. We need to find our least common multiple, or when we're talking about just fractions, our least common denominator. So we're talking just about fractions, our least common denominator. Jason, do you know what the denominators of this fraction, of these two fractions are? 10 and 5. And we're going to take and we're going to list the multiples of these two denominators. Now, obviously, you could probably look at this and tell me what the least common multiple is. So who thinks they can look at it? Raise your hand. If you think you can look at it, and tell me what the least common multiple is. Sanaya? 20. Okay, 20. Ian? 10. Okay, 10. Morgan? 10. 10. Okay? Let's try it. When you're doing the least common multiple, as we've already done videos on that, you're basically making a multiplication chart and you're going to write it out until you find the first number that appears on both multiples, on both lists. That's least common. Can we find a common denominator that is not the least common? Yes. I could multiply 10 times 5 and make a common denominator of 50. But because I like to make my work easier, if possible, I'd like to find the least common multiple. Now something else you may keep in mind that you can use is you can use a multiplication chart on a problem like this. Because all I'm looking at is my multiples of 10, which are listed on a multiplication chart. My multiples of 5, which are listed on a multiplication chart. Okay, so I'm going to go through and list, I'm just going to go through and list the first four for each and see if I find one in common. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 5, 10, 15, 20. So we do have 20 in common. But we also have 10 in common. And 10 would be our least common. So first step, we find our least common denominator. And what we do with that is we are going to change both of these fractions into something that is equivalent to them 
So we're not going to change the value, but we want them both to have a denominator of 10. We want them both to have a denominator of 10. Gus, what is 327 times 1? Uh, 327. 327. Kinley, what is 4,286 times 1? The same number, 4,286. Good. The same number. Okay. So, if we went through and I gave you 600 problems where you multiplied by 1, are you going to change the other factor? No. So, can we safely say that if you multiply something by 1, you're not changing the value? Yes. Okay, we can safely say that. We're good with that, right? All right. So, if I want to multiply by a fraction that is equivalent to 1, that will give me a denominator of 10, I'm just going to look at the parts I have. I have these two denominators. What 10 times what is 10? 1. 1. What do we call a fraction that has the same... Let me rephrase that. What is the value of a fraction that has the same numerator as denominator? 1. 1 whole. So it doesn't matter if I have 5,280 as my numerator and 5,280 as my denominator. If it has the same, the same numerator and denominator... Oh, I wore this shirt today. This makes perfect sense today. It's pretty good. I was about to say. It's good. That's smart, Mr. McMurdo. I wasn't even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. As long as it has the same numerator and denominator, that fraction is going to equal 1. I did not change the value. One. Then I look at my numerators. 1 times 1 is 1. Okay? Now this one's different. We have different denominators here. But we don't want to change the value. So we're going to have to multiply that fraction by 1, but a different one. I can't multiply this by 1 over 1. That's not going to change the value. It's not going to change the value. So, Kane, do you have any idea what fraction that equals 1 we should use? 5 times what is 10? Two. two, good. So two over two. Now if I multiply my numerator, one times two is what, Kane? One times two. Two, good. Now I want to check, because you all have fraction pieces. We want to see, does one-fifth actually equal two-tenths? I can check that. And there's my one-fifth piece, there's my two-tenths pieces. So they are equivalent, same value. Same value. Just like when we simplified fractions earlier, we divided by a fraction that equals one. It's the same thing. So now I've changed. One-tenth is equivalent to one-tenth. One-fifth is equivalent to two-tenths. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward, fairly easy. Fairly fair. Let's look at one more. I've got set aside three different problems for each class. So if you're still if you're still confused at the end of each class because your arms are flapping, then you can always go back and watch the videos for the other classes. We have one third and two ninths. One third and two ninths. Again, this is easy because I can use my multiplication chart that you have in your journals. Or if you don't have one, you could write one. <laughs> JJ, what are my denominators in this fraction? Three and nine. Okay, 
going to start off by just doing the first four because most of the time it's going to be in the first four. You may have to go out further. Most of the time you're going to be able to figure it out, especially the more practice you get as we start adding and subtracting fractions because it does make sense. So you'll be able to figure it out. It does make sense. You'll be able to figure out most of the time. So let's l list my first, multi first four multiples of each of these. 3, 6, 9, 12, 9, 18, 27, 36. Izzy, what is my least common multiple? Uh, 9. 9. So my least common denominator then is 9. So I need to change each of these so that they have a denominator of 9. Each of these, so they have a denominator of 9. Obviously, one already does have a denominator of 9, so I don't really have to change that. One third does not have a denominator of 9, so I need to change that by multiplying by a fraction that equals 1. And as we've said moments ago, anytime a fraction has the same numerator as denominator, that fraction equals 1. It really does, I promise. I'm not making that up. I'm not. I'm not. If I had one half and one half, that's two halves, and two halves is equivalent to one. I could do that the same with all of these. I could. Really. I could. So now I need to multiply one third by, I don't have ninths, so I can't prove it. I need to multiply one third by a fraction, or by a fraction that equals one, that will give me nine as a denominator. Morgan, what fraction that equals one would I choose? God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Three times what is nine? Three. And I can always look over here. Three times three is nine. So three times three over three, because three over three equals one. And when I multiply fractions, I multiply straight across. Wow, you just taught us how to multiply fractions, just like that. Man, you're the best teacher ever. I know, thank you. And if you don't have the best teacher ever, you can always watch my videos because Morgan thinks I'm the best one ever. All right, so Morgan, what's one times three? Three. Three. So one third equals three ninths. Two ninths equals three ninths. Or two ninths equals two ninths, sorry. One third equals three ninths. I multiplied by a fraction that equals one. Has the same numerator as denominator. Two ninths was already over nine. So two ninths equals two ninths. Now I could add those if I needed to. I could subtract them if I needed to. If I added them, what'd you say it would be, Sahana? What you said, if I said if I added those, it would be what? Five ninths. If I subtracted those, it'd be what? One ninth. Okay. Man, you guys are already, already a day or two ahead of me here. Man. Isn't it amazing, Alizé, how smart this class is? Let's take one sixth and two fourths. One sixth and two fourths. Colin, what are my denominators? Six and four. Six and four. Those, once again, would show up on a multiplication chart. I'm going to list my multiples. Just going to go out to four because the majority of the ones we do are going to be by four. You're going to have a handful that you're going to have to go further than four. Like in my third class, one of the ones we have is going to go further than four. Okay? So six. 12, 18, 24, 4, 8, 12, 16. My least common denominator is what, Joshua? 12. 12. Least common denominator is 12. I need to change 1 6 to something over 12. 2 fourth into something over 12. I need to do that by multiplying each of these by a fraction that equals 1. 
You need to do that by multiplying each of these by a fraction that equals 1. If you'd like to sponsor my videos, do it. just free Dr. Pepper for lifetime, and I will put this in every video. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, so now I have one-sixth, and I want to change that into something over 12. Here's my one-sixth. Here's my one-sixth. Jaron, what would I multiply by 6 to get 12? 2. 2. I need my fraction to equal 1, so I need to do 2 over 2. So Jaron, what's my numerator? 1 times 2 is? Uh, 2. 2. So I say 1 sixth equals 2 twelfths. Mm -hmm. Boom, shakalaka, that works out. Yeah, I am. I know, right? I know, right? Natalie! Natalie, what fraction that equals 1 would I use here? 3 thirds. Natalie knows that because 4 times 3 is 12. So 2 times 3 is what, Natalie? 6. So 2 fourths, according to our math and according to my young friend Natalie, is going to equal 6 twelfths. Well, 1 fourth, as I see here, equals 3 twelfths. Wow. wow. So 2 fourths would then equal 6 twelfths. I'm seeing it all now. I'm seeing why you made us find the least common denominator, Mr. McMurdo. I'm seeing why you made us use our fraction strips to find equivalent fractions. I'm seeing it all, Mr. McMurdo. Seeing it all! I'm seeing why my teacher taught us that if you multiply by one, you don't change the value. Math is cool because it all ties together. It all ties. Boom shakalaka, peace out, God bless, love you. Do something kind today. Sonic sponsor me. If you're not subscribed, do it now.